So today I'm going to be using an anti-gravity rod to spin a magnet in the vacuum chamber and see how long it will spin with no air friction. Will it spin forever or is there some other force that's going to stop it? And it doesn't really stop gravity, but what it does is cause these little tiny magnets in here to float. And the way it does it is in this rod are crystals of bismuth and bismuth is diamagnetic, meaning it repels a magnet. And so when you stick it in between here, the magnet is repelled on both ends. And this is cool because it will float stably. So it will float indefinitely like this. Whereas when you try to float things with two repelling magnets, they're not stable and so they always tend to flip over. So what I'm going to be doing is spinning this little magnet in here and then putting it in the vacuum chamber and seeing if it will spin forever. So in here I have crystals of bismuth because bismuth is strongly diamagnetic. But actually everything on earth is slightly diamagnetic. Let me show you what I mean. So everything in the entire world actually repels a magnet slightly. It's just that some things also attract a magnet more than they repel it. So for example, iron attracts a magnet more than it repels it, and so the overall effect is it attracts it. But actually everything has the effect of repelling a magnet slightly, and that's called diamagnetism. So I just have my water cup floating in water so it doesn't have any friction, and, and I'm gonna show you how when I bring my strong magnet near it, it will repel it. See how it's pushing it away? I can even make it stop, go the other way. So I'm not touching it, I'm just holding the magnet near it. You can do the same thing with wood. There's actually scientists that have levitated frogs using diamagnetism. And then a few materials like aluminum are paramagnetic. And paramagnetic means it's attracted to magnets. So now if I just bring my magnet near the aluminum, the aluminum will go towards it. So this is paramagnetism and it's really weak. So the reason that things are diamagnetic or paramagnetic is if they have paired electrons. If the electrons are paired in the material, it's diamagnetic. If they're unpaired, it's paramagnetic. The last type of magnetism you're probably most familiar with is ferromagnetism. But there's only a few materials that are ferromagnetic, like iron. So you can see how much stronger ferromagnetism is than paramagnetism or diamagnetism. With this type of magnet, I have to be pretty careful if it gets any closer. So materials that are ferromagnetic actually keep their magnetism even after the external magnetic field is removed. So for example, if I put my fork on this magnet and then remove the magnet, the fork keeps the magnetic field and becomes its own magnet. So that's ferromagnetism and not a lot of materials have this property. So in my anti-gravity rod here, I have crystals of bismuth, and bismuth is actually the most diamagnetic naturally occurring substance there is, so much so that you can float a magnet in it. So it's repelling the magnet on all sides, causing it to float. So I thought it would be cool today to see how long we could get this magnet to spin under vacuum. So the way I'm going to do this is, I have a cool way of spinning it while keeping it under vacuum. So I'll put the lid on and I'm gonna aim the inlet of the air right where the magnet is. And so when I let a little bit of air in, a burst of air will go in and it'll spin the magnet. And so I'll get it mostly under vacuum and then let a little bit of air in and it'll start spinning the magnet. And then I'll open the valve up and it'll suck that air out. Then we'll see how long the magnet will spin when there's no air friction around it. Will it be forever or is there some other force that's gonna stop it? Okay, so first I'll put on my lid here. Okay, so I'm at full vacuum, so I'm gonna let in a little burst of air and the vacuum's strong enough to remove that air fairly quickly, so it should still be at a pretty good vacuum. And then let's see how long it spins. Okay, let's get it spinning.
Okay, that got us spinning really fast. Go. So you can make your comments right now of how long you think that will be spinning for. It's spinning quite fast right now. Still going in there. So you can see it's almost completely stopped in there. It'll probably take a while to completely stop because it has a very slow rotation right now. Oh, it actually turned back the other way. <laughs> so I think we can say that it's stopped now. We can start it spinning again. So the question is, why did it stop spinning? And the answer is because when the magnet's spinning on there, even though there's no more air friction in the vacuum, it still has friction. And that's because it's a magnet spinning around metal. And when you move a magnet around metal, it makes electrons move within the metal, and those electrons create a magnetic field that repels the magnetic field of the magnet. And so essentially, you're always creating a magnetic field that's slowing down that initial field. Hey everyone, thanks for watching another episode of The Action Lab. I hope you enjoyed it. If you're not subscribed yet, remember to hit that subscribe button if you like this video. And you can comment in the comments section with any questions you have and I'll try to get to them. And also remember to hit that bell button to be notified when my latest video comes out. I'm usually more active right when I post a video. And thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time.